Hello everybody, this is Mark Kumar, your lifestyle entrepreneur and a proud founder of Simple Podcast Cloud, a platform that is for podcaster by podcaster. And if you're in the market for looking for a podcast hosting company, check us out at simplepodcastcloud.com. And if you listen to the whole show, at the end of the show, we're going to share something amazing with you guys. So that way it's going to help us out. So make sure you listen to the whole show. And at the end, we are going to be giving away a really special gift that you are going to find it really cool. So without any further ado, today's podcaster, who is going to share with you some amazing stuff because he has a wealth of knowledge. So I'm not going to say any more. I will <laughs> let him introduce himself and tell about himself. And let's get this party started. So go right ahead, man. Hey, Mark. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, Chris Jordan. I am the host of the Dudes and Beer podcast as well as the host of the Talking Sound podcast, owner of the HC Universal Network and podcastcadet.com and online one-on-one -on -one podcasting university see what i mean this dude is gonna definitely add some amazing value to this particular podcast so you make sure you listen to the whole thing so let me ask you this chris how or why did you start get into the podcasting wonderful world of podcasting i started podcasting many years ago i spent some time as a teacher and I always loved teaching, always loved speaking about subjects that I loved. Uh, after that, I spent some time in broadcast and really loved my time in broadcast. It was great. I was an engineer on broadcast. Like I told you before the show, I'm a live AV engineer. It's what I do. So whether it was mixing the cameras in the studio or you know, running a radio studio, I just loved the medium of broadcasting. And... It was after I'd gotten off broadcast and gone back to the world of corporate AV, my wife asked me uh, what I was going to do. And it, I guess I was, you know, going on 40. It was just one of those things. It was a natural response of it's time for me to start teaching other audio engineers. Right. I'm almost 40. I've been doing this for 20 years of my life. It's time for me to pass the knowledge on to other people the same way that somebody passed it on to me. Yep. Um, find the next realm of engineer and kind of lift them up into the world. Uh, so Talking Sound was my first show that was really stories about how people got into the world of audio video, whether they were a lighting designer, whether they were an audio engineer, video engineer, you know, film director, what happened. Mm -hmm. And it was really kind of that exploration of how did you go from, you know, dishing coffee every day to being a film director, like full time. And, and I've interviewed people that were literally like teachers for 20 years and just went out and finally one day retired and started directing films and writing films and stuff. Um, and it was very much my story where I spent time as a youth minister, spent time in various other fields before I found my way into broadcast and before I found my way to this, which has really become a huge outlet for me it's been fantastic been going about six years now with everything so really six strong years yeah yeah we're on season six of talking sound and year five of dudes and beer so all right awesome man yeah. you first of all congratulations Thank you. on doing this this particular amazing thing with six strong ears, like wow, that's yeah. really, really inspiring. I know for I just started last year and I don't love the hell out of this thing. And oh, then yeah, yeah, you doing it for six years. I can only imagine the amount of the, the knowledge, more importantly, the people you have met throughout this journey. I would oh, yeah. love to know how many people have you met that you're like, wow, now I'm so more fired up than I was, yeah, before. yeah. Well, and, and that's just it, you know. It, it really is just the limit of where you can take it. Um, I've, I've, it's gotten to the point now with dudes and beer where it's no longer just people sitting around a table. It's me talking with an expert, whether it's like international authors like, you know, Graham Phillips talking about the search for the Ark of the Covenant. You know, just it's wild. Like I talked to Bingo Minerva from uh, from Lost Gold of World War Two on the History Channel. And yeah, like none of this would have happened if I wasn't podcasting. Um, it's literally, I consider it the fact of 
I will not be able to push cases around the country my whole life. Uh, nobody wants that dude that just wants to show up and operate the equipment and then leave. If you're not going to set it up, get out of here. So, yeah, um, for me, it's very much the fact of I can do this for the rest of my life. I can pass this knowledge on for the rest of my life as far as like having the podcast university, teaching people to podcast and distribute and monetize and, you know, figuring out a way to make their passion a reality. Awesome, man. That That's great because I, I love the fact that you said you have this knowledge, you want to pass it on to somebody who could use that. And I was, at one point in my life, I was the same boat when I was like yeah. listening to podcasters when I started it. I'm like, I want to listen to it. That's just like whatever, just like anybody else who started to start to listen to it. And then one podcast leads to another podcast, leads to another podcast. Yeah. And then 300 podcasts later, it's like, holy crap. I My cup is full and then it's overflowing of knowledge. Now I want to give it to somebody else. And that's why I started the podcaster for uh, the uh, uh, the entrepreneurs and this is for simple podcast class and like there's other ones that I do as well but the point is like you have so much knowledge and then to contrary to what other people believe like some people who are just starting out like this person is an expert he's not gonna share my secret his secret with him with me or anybody else because he's like you know this expert and expert people don't share but on the contrary it's just the opposite so tell me about that I can't hear you. <laughs> Dude, I cannot hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I hit my mute. I hit my foot. Sorry about that. See, see that's, um, that's, the, that's the beautiful part about podcasts. It's just the, because <laughs> the, there, there are so many things that w could go wrong. But the thing yeah. is, the people who are just starting off, hey, just know that things like that will happen throughout your process, your journey. It's okay, but you continue on. Like, this, this is the beautiful part about you love live on the recording thing. So it's that's cool. That's it. Yeah, and one of, one of my big uh, people that I love talking to regularly is Todd Cochran. Uh, he's the owner and CEO of Blueberry. And it, you'd be amazed. Like, he is the most regular dude in the world. I've gone out and covered CES with him. Um, like, it's crazy. But he is, like, one of the most regular guys in the world you can sit down and have, like, a beer with and just have a conversation about podcasting. It really is probably, amongst everything, one of the most. Because, like, as an audio engineer, there is some of that, like, um, maybe you don't want to teach somebody everything because they're going to come take your job. Um, it's not that way in podcasting. We're we are a community amongst ourselves, and to to not help another podcaster means that at some point someone's not going to help you. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's like all about the mindset. It's like the mindset is like I want to keep this wonderful thing to myself. Yeah, and you know, there's yeah. so many other communities out there that does that. But within the podcast community, it's a beautiful thing because we are literally here to share information with the other, so they can grow and experience the thing that we are experiencing. Yeah. Now, now, granted, there have been times like uh, I want to say it was an underdog podcast community the other day. Um, somebody was asking about a specific type of service uh and i'm i as a business owner i'm not one to spam people's businesses out right you know um i built i built long relations with marketing companies things like that it was somebody who was like hey i built up a few companies i, I built up this podcast i would like to take it to the next level and i'm looking for a marketing person and i was like feel free to pm me i can hook you up with somebody and somebody responded, like, why not give everybody the information? And I was like, well, unfortunately, through years of working with this person professionally, uh, I'm not prone to just give it out because they're going to be inundated with a bunch of leads that are not for them. Right. Absolutely. You know, like as a business owner, there's, there's a market that you're trying to hit and a market that you're just trying to weed through. Right. And at the point that they're at, at the agency level that they're at, they are definitely way past the weed out market. So I'm not going to be like, Hey, yeah, go to this company. Cause they're, they're trying to get every Tom, Dick and Harry. Right. You know? So, it, and I made that very clear. I was like, if you would like to, if you'd like to feel free to PM me about your show, 
feel free and I can vet you. And if you, if you go through a decent vetting process, I'll pass on the recommendation. <laughs> but I'm not just going to pass out somebody's business name to a thread with 1,200 people on it. That's, right. not, prof- that's not professional. Yeah, so, that does like people who you're gonna pass it on, so you may lose the credibility with yeah, them. They're like, hey, Chris is just passing on whatever you know. Yeah, he's just that. passing on whatever junk that comes down the line. Right, absolutely. You definitely need to filter those things out. So, what I want to ask you is like, let's take you back. Let's take our audience back mm-hmm. to the journey. Even though you are audio engineer, this may yeah. or may not apply to you. But when you recorded your very, 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 very first podcast episode, tell us your experience about that. Uh, I'm trying to remember episode one of Talking Sound, I think may have been like an introduction to your soundboard. The first few episodes were very instructional where it was like, here's how to choose a microphone for what you're doing, that kind of stuff. Um, so for me, I guess it was it was pretty natural. It was it wasn't that hard for me. Like I said, I was used to being up in front of a classroom. I was used to teaching people ages four to forty. So, you know, it, for me, it was pretty natural. It wasn't that hard. It was more uh, getting the tech down, mainly because I'm I'm a tech, and <laughs> I, don't, I don't want tech issues. So right. yeah, so it was. So- so what was your challenge in the beginning that you were like, holy crap, I can't, I need to figure this out. I don't understand this. Quite, quite honestly, the biggest challenge, um, which is what I tell everybody is video. Okay. Why video? Um, and, and mainly because I have had issue on site with video and just had to release the show as an audio episode. Perfectly fine. Um, but I think I think it's a big thing right now, especially with all the Facebook feeds, things like that. People incorporating video into their show, and my big question is, why? Uh, master the audio part first. Okay. Podcasting is mainly an audio format. Aside from that, it's called a vlog. Um, right. <laughs> you know, you can have a video cast, whatever. Um, but like dudes and beer. Until it got to the point that I could dependably show things on screen, I didn't want to just show three people sitting around a table having beer and talking. Now it's the fact that not only do I have the guests there, but I've got articles that we're referring to popping up on screen. I'm bringing up PDFs that we're talking about. I'm showing the audience the actual content that we're talking about. It's not just two people sitting at a table. Uh, So... That that for me was a big part of it, and really the fact of uh, sim- simplify things as much as possible. I think most people want to jump in whole hog and don't really take the time to learn one thing before they move on to the next. Okay, so what is the one thing that you feel like people should learn about audio, like in terms of uh, the post-production side? Or when you recorded or what? Oh, no, recording. Post-production's easy. Post-production should be next to nothing, literally. Um, and, and that's mainly due to the fact that once you've captured the audio, it's there for all eternity. If it sounds like you tried to, you know, take poop and polish it, it's going to sound like that forever. You will never be able to fix it. Ever. It won't happen. Right. Uh, and that's that's... Just the audio engineer's rule. Whatever is on tape, it's on tape. Unless you have a Wayback Machine and you can go back to that point in time and re-record it, it's recorded. Whatever artifact is there, whatever sound is in the background, you're going to have to deal with it. So the better you can get at recording in, with the same equipment in any environment. Okay. So okay. is there any tips you could share about recording better? Or better quality, I guess you mean, or better in what sense? Most of that, most of that is really just knowing your equipment, being practiced with your equipment. Gotcha. That's that's really the main part is time on equipment. Um, that's what most people tend to lack because they're not they're not audio engineers. Um, I did an episode probably about two three seasons ago now with talking sound about the old concept of ten thousand hours to be a professional. 
Right. Um, it used to be a concept that was taught in workshops and in sales meetings all the time. Was that you know once you have ten thousand hours or something, you can call yourself a professional. Uh, that's what the that's what the whole apprenticeship program, like apprentice to master, was based off ten thousand hours, and that basically equates to thirty hours a week for five years. Wow. So that. Once you get to that amount of time on gear, you can yeah, say you're a professional. Right. Right. Until then, uh, the question is, how much time are you spending practicing with your gear? Are you right. just turning it on for one hour a week and hitting record and then you're done and you wonder why you don't get good results? Or are you practicing with your equipment beforehand? Same thing as taking a guitar lesson. It's great if, you, it's great if you're good at the lesson, did you practice it during the week? Right. I guess the same analogy would be like, for example, if Michael Jordan were to get on the yeah. basketball court for the very first time and thinking that he's going to be great as he was before, yeah. not going to happen. The, the, or, the practice part is what made him better. Or to think that not practicing daily once he's at that point. Right. Even though you're still at that point, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be practicing. Um Prime example, right now, I am not on the road doing my trade on the daily. Uh, I am used to being out unloading 18 wheelers full of gear, setting up shows, doing things like that. Putting up a show, three days later, we take it down, fly across the country, and we do a totally different show. New trucks of gear show up, new client. That's, that's a reflex muscle. Right. Um, it's something that has to be exercised regularly. And now it's the point of uh, once the industry respring's, will the show just go into my COVID nap time? Like you're really cutting into my nap time now. I'm I'm used to being self-employed at home, not self-employed on the road. Uh, I'm used to being asleep. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but the fact is, in all sincerity, aside from that, I still pull out my equipment. Uh, I still get in the back room. I tinker like. Not too long ago, I got the new Tascam uh, 12 input mixer. So always trying to learn, always trying to stay on top of new equipment, new toys, new tools. Uh, it is an ever evolving process once you get into it professionally. For those that are just doing a show, um, get, get it to a decent audio quality. You'd be surprised what you can get. Like this little mic right here that I'm wearing is a... It's a thirty-dollar microphone. As long as it's placed properly, that's all you need. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I, all these things, like in terms yeah. of interviews, even from my own personal experiences, yeah. equipment is not as important as no. compared to the content that you produce for your that's show. That's right. That's right. It's it's all about content. Right. It's all about content. I mean, so, you can you can have bad audio. It's okay. Like I said, I've released shows with bad audio, and I'm an audio engineer, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is ironic because you would think you want to perfect it down to the T until it sounds hundred percent. Then you'd be like, okay, well, I want to redo it again. I feel for all these people that literally sit around and edit a forty-five minute show, and it takes them like three. I, Guilty as charged. I I don't edit. I just, I come from the broadcast background. So it's like, okay, like it trips most people out because I literally fire the intro. I do my, do my commercial, roll into the show. And then I hit my outro and I'm like, okay, thanks. We're done. Chris, I'll tell you what, the very no, first no episode, production. the done. first few, first few <laughs> episodes of my show literally took me eight hours to edit yeah. it. And at that time I felt like I wasn't not happy with the quality but i yeah. released it anyway and now almost a year later i'm into the point where it's just conversation zero production off you go yeah yeah and literally you'll find that most of the time the audience isn't like i don't go through and get rid of ums yeah. i just don't uh i worked in broadcast for years we had people on the phone that were like senators stuff right. like that they ummed all day long what are, what are you going to do? Edit Ross Perot? No. Like, the show went out live. You're not going to edit it. It was right. live. <laughs> exactly. And I think, I think that's what it is. Like, sometimes you just need to understand. Like, if you look at a pizza, right? Pizza as a whole. 
people want a pizza they don't care about if one part of the slice like one inch of the slice is bad you know yeah. they don't care what what the the content yeah. like you said like you know you and i agree with the content is the king long yeah. as your overall concept That's of right. the content is great and someone can actually use it then you're good the quality is not as important it's still important but That's not right. as important so, That's right. so speaking of content how I'm assuming your shows are interview based or what I also call is a club based where you have three people coming together, having fun, you know, just gr yeah. creating content. How, what, um, how, how do you go about creating content in that respect? Well, talking sound is very much an interview. It's just okay. my saying dudes and beer has become that way as well. Uh, and thankfully, um, I think when dudes and beer started, I had a fantastic concept and I'm still working under that premise. And okay. the premise was that, um, America was founded in a bar. It was founded by a bunch of guys in a bar going, Hey, you know what we need to do? Get out from <laughs> underneath that King over there. Um, so wh why is it that we can't talk about religion and politics and economics in bars anymore? That's kind of how this whole philosophic experiment of a country started. Uh, and you wonder what stymied us. That's why. Uh, so we talk a lot about fringe topics. We talk a lot about things that the media doesn't cover. Um, and in the last two, three years since I've been on the road so much, it got to where I was not in studio. Uh, so I would dial in and my co-host and friend would be there, you know, things like that. But it, it at the same time got to where I was getting guests on that were pretty prominent guests. And they would come on regularly and want to come on regularly. So I was like, well, no offense, guys. Like, I enjoy us sitting back and having a beer and stuff. But I'm about to get rid of the studio because I'm there one Tuesday a month now. <laughs> Instead of 10 days a month, I'm there one day a month. Right. Uh, so it's just not worth me spending the money right. uh, when I have everything at home that's 10 times better than what's in that studio. So. Right. I was like, I'm just going to start producing it from home and, you know, uh, probably just going to take it to a one on one interview format. And I think that really was kind of our first realm of rebranding where it really brought it much to a much more focused aspect gotcha. um, than what it was. Not that it wasn't enjoyable, not that it wasn't great. We did fantastic stuff uh, in those three years, like going up to Mecham Auto Auction and doing five hour long broadcasts live from there you know we we had some great strides we did some great things but it was definitely one of those once i got to a focused format mm -hmm. the numbers definitely rose oh yeah speaking of numbers what is your analytic numbers like you say that you were like okay if i'm heading that number i know i'm doing good so what do you consider a success in terms of a podcast show well, I mean, I've got some regular numbers. Really, what I consider more of a success is my reach on social media. Uh, and I can typically tell which guests I want to have back on. Okay. Because I know what my numbers are organically. Uh, <laughs> right. I, I know whenever I share something to my page, it gets this many hits regardless. Like, it'll typically get about five, 600 hits. Um, and I'm good with that. But whenever I have a really good guest on, that number will jump to like 2,500, 3,000, because that guest is out there promoting the post. Right. Absolutely. And I can, I can tell. A lot of hosts don't look at that stuff. They don't metric that. Like, those are the guests that I want to have back on right. because they're the ones that are sharing the content. Absolutely. And then those are the ones, obviously, right? Because you and, are, you are doing your part. They're doing their part. So it becomes like 50, 50 yeah. as compared to you just oh. doing it. And the guest is like, whatever. and, and believe me, it is not the famous people. It's not talking sound. I have had like, I've interviewed the, the, uh, creator of Cubert. That was awesome. Um, he did a great job putting things out. I had one guy who was a PR guy. Uh, out of Houston, wanted to wanted to start bringing me people that he worked with, artists, okay. Okay. things like that. Um, brought me one interview went all right. Uh, I sent him a preview copy, and he saw fit to release the copy. And I was like, no, 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 no. Number one, you can't release my show. It doesn't work that way. Uh, 
you need to pull that down immediately. Um, the second show, we had some sort of technical issue. The third, um, he literally just flipped out, had this horrible, horrible issue. And, oh, dude, I'm not even joking. Uh, and the, the second interview that I did was with, pretty prominent musician you know uh i'm not going to say his name right, i just I understand. I understand. not not because of what i'm about to say okay. um and for those who know he he was the studio drummer for jack and diane by john mellencamp things like that he's the drummer for like chicken foot all kinds of stuff um pretty famous guy like when i when i talked to him he had to hold the interview for 30 minutes because Joe Satriani just walked in to get a disc of drum tracks from him. So interview had to be held. Cool. Whatever. Great yeah. interview. Went off. Awesome. Um, guy, guy started going crazy. and was like, Oh, I brought you all these famous people. I was like, they did nothing. He was like, well, what are you talking about? He's huge. He's, he's done this and that, you know, he wrote a book that was forwarded by Neil Peart. I'm like, okay. And I sent him a screenshot of the shares. Right. I was like, I metric everything, right. all of it. Your guest shared this 38 times. I was like, here's a local hip hop artist who has 3,000 shares. Why is it that your local hip hop artist is out promoting his stuff more than you're promoting him as a PR agent? Or more than he is promoting himself. Uh, and he was like, oh, I'm going to tell him you said that. I'm like, feel free. Seems like you as a PR agent are not doing your job if this little hip-hop dude from Austin, Texas can beat out your numbers by like a thousand-fold. Right. Like he had 3,000 views on his episode. You had 38. <laughs> Yep. So it's not it's not about having famous guests. It's not famous guests are cool, but they don't always bring in the listens. They aren't always the one out there socially sharing things. And in this game, it really is about that person that socially shares. Um, it's about that person that is helping you pull your cart to the end as well. Right. Like I said before, it's like a 50-50 thing. You don't want a person yeah. who is like taking 100, like you doing the promotion part, and yeah. the person who you're interviewing is like, thank you, I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, it, you know, hey, it may be a great interview. Um, I've had people that were mediocre interviews back on because their shares were out of control. Okay. Like, hey, if you're going to get out there and you're going to promote my show like that, you can have my airwaves anytime. <laughs> okay. so, so so let, let's take one step for uh, back let's say if whoever you're going to interview mm. what are your uh qualification let's just say that you want to say if this person has a b and c then he can come in the show i can interview or have him on the show what is your validation check for that uh first thing is always brand is it okay. as as a former on-air producer is is it on brand is it what we're about? Does it fit within that three sentence mission statement? And if you as a podcast do not have a three to five sentence mission statement that this is what we are about, sit down and do it. Um, it will focus your show like you'll never believe because that's all it takes. That's, that's test number one from anybody that asks you to be on the show or anybody that someone on the show says, hey, let's get them. All you ever have to do is pull out that description. Does it fit this description? If it doesn't, we don't need to have it on. Gotcha. That's that's test number one right there. Number two, is it is it something that my audience can learn from or better themselves with? Right. Uh, is it a social, especially with dudes and beer? Is it a social issue that's going on right now? Is it some kind of news issue that's going on right now that maybe need some decoding or, you know, demystification for the common man. Right. So, yeah, it's, okay. those are my, those are my two really big litmus tests is, is it on brand with my show to begin with? And is it within what my stated goal of the show is? And is it something that my audience will learn and better themselves from? 
Right. And I think I was going to ask you, how do you go about creating content? But you said it, like if you're doing a do with do it with podcast show and if it's within the whatever people are talking about, it can't be talked about that part in it because then, you know, you have yeah. something to talk about what people care about. Like, yeah. for example, not too long ago, Black Lives Matter. That was a hot topic. Yep. Did you have anybody from that kind of uh, environment to come to on your show or did you? Uh, that one's that one's a little bit hard, mainly because Black Lives Matter doesn't have a centralized gotcha. leadership anymore. Uh, yeah. Whenever it first started, it did, but it doesn't Kinda, necessarily right. anymore. So whenever you're talking to one Black Lives Matter group in Austin, it may be a totally different message from the one in Houston. Um, right. So really more what we talked about during that time was having people on um, that were security professionals, that kind of stuff, talking about talking about the things that were going on in Oregon. Uh, one of the things that happened right as uh, everything really happened um, in Minneapolis was uh, Dudes and Beer was actively contacted by members of Anonymous, uh, which was pretty incredible. Um, I, I've got a few connections just with the way the show has gone in my past broadcast experience. I have a few connections in the intelligence field, that kind of stuff, uh, that come on the show, that kind of thing. And that is who they came through. Um, they were like, listen, we know you've been on the show. We've heard the show. We think that this guy is pretty legit in the fact that he, he will at least give us a platform without okay. question. Um, and that's what it was. It wasn't necessarily like they were kind enough to answer a couple of questions about who they are, what they do, that kind of stuff. But aside from that, it was literally me giving my platform over to Anonymous for them to say like, hey, Minneapolis Police Department, we have hacked your computers. We have dirt on every single one of your police officers. If we do not see arrests within the next 24 hours, this will start coming out. Um, and 20 minutes before that episode went live to the internet, my website came under active DDoS. So yeah, like I, I had members of anonymous in the background, like swatting people away from my server, like actively trying to take down my show. Uh, it was pretty wild. It was, it was very interesting. Um, but that one, um, believe it or not, was not one of the largest listened to episodes over the last four months. And, and that was anonymous. Like, they don't, they don't go on Fox News or CNN or anything like that, you know? So uh, that, that's what I'm saying. It's a, even something like that, something that's huge and breaking on that realm, because it was announced that anonymous had hacked the computers. Right. You know? So it's like, how did that little news tidbit that I covered not make the major radar anywhere that this podcast <laughs> had anonymous on it. <laughs> how did you not get in the news interview? How did, how you did know? that not happen? So right. yeah, right. that's, um, but it, it is really more about like, have fun with your show, enjoy your show. I'm one of those people. If, I'm not going to do a show that I wouldn't listen to. Right. I'm not going to have a guest on that. I wouldn't want to listen from, you know, that I wouldn't want to sit around and listen to for two or three hours. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that's one of the things is like when people think about creating a show, it's like, hey, what kind of show should I have? What niche yeah. do I cover? So I think you hit it right on the nail is like, hey, if you can right. listen to your own show, that's a good show. Because yeah. when you're going to tell other people about it, you're going to be pretty excited and not be like, hey, my show is X, Y, Z, and they go listen and yeah. listen. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride. I mean, I, I love podcasting. That's half the reason that I started Podcast Cadet, to be able to go out and do workshops. And there are so many people out there that want to start a show, that have an idea. And this this market, this world of podcasting has literally taken off over the last six years. Um, the last six years has really been the podcasting revolution as we know it now, yep. uh, where major platforms have started coming into play now. 
Oh yeah, definitely. You and know, so the other day I was on Facebook, uh, people mm -hmm. like uh, I, I forgot what it was. It was Pandora or iHeartRadio. I think it was one of them advertising. Hey, come listen to the podcast that we have here. So people are definitely taking yeah. notice on it. So well, can you can you talk about this podcast cadet uh, platform that you have? I would love to hear more about that. Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. Like I said, it's it's really a one-on-one -on -one consultation service. Uh, okay. Whether you're thinking about starting a show, whether you have a show that you're already starting, don't really know the tech, need a helping hand with that, uh, whether you need help with branding, distribution, monetization, we have one-on-one -on -one workshops to help make you a better host, to learn a little bit of improv and you know, be able to work one-on-one -on -one with your co-host, that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it's, it's really been great. Uh, over the last couple of years, my wife and I have been going out and uh, teaching at podcast festivals, that kind of stuff. So What, what in the world fantastic. is a podcast festival? <laughs> I've never, yeah. never heard of a such thing, that podcast oh, yeah. festival. What is that thing? Yeah, yeah. Literally, it's like a two or three day long conference, like, like what I do. Uh, where I go out and do like an insurance conference for two or three days. It's except it's people up on stage like Todd Cochran, head of Blueberry, giving a talk for an hour about how to pick the right host for your stuff. Um, going to workshops like my wife puts on uh, for improv for hosts, you okay. know, learning, learning to speak extemporaneously, learning to think outside of the box and be a little bit more witty than you might typically be. Um, that kind of stuff. So. Uh, even me going out and teaching our podcast boot camp. Uh, we typically do that at Comic Cons, that kind of stuff, where it's, yeah, huge audience at Comic Cons because most of them are podcast listeners and love podcasts. So they want to start one. Um, and we, we provide things at a very affordable rate, very, very affordable. Uh, so, yeah, it, it really makes it easy for you to be able to learn the tech one on one. Um, which is what I think is really the important thing is that that one on one section. You can always be in a class with three or four people like we do our podcast boot camp. Um, and whenever we've done that, it's normally about 50 to 100 people in a room for a couple of hours. Um, but when you get that one on one time, it really does help bridge the gap a little bit faster as far as technology, figuring things out like distribution, uh, branding, web and don't even ask yourself whether or not to have a URL, folks. Go buy your domain name. Just do it. Do it. Um, you are doing yourself and your brand a disservice. If you ever intend on going beyond episode 30, just go buy a website. Do it. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, because like what I see, a lot of people who do the podcast interviews, they go out what they call the podcast uh, interview uh, stream things, whatever you want to yeah. call it, where they go out there and then they put in their uh, what you call their yeah, Instagram URL or Facebook yeah. or YouTube or uh, Apple URL. And yeah. if you somebody just think about it this way, if somebody listen to their your show. On their car radio or car, car stereo or they have their uh, on their iPod plugged in, whatever, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever, they listen yeah. to it, right? The key part here is they're listening to what you are saying. So if you give them this long URL, yeah. nobody is going to remember it. Like, for yeah. example, podcastcadet.com is very simple to remember. If you don't remember, you'll be like, podcast? Want to be a cadet? Podcastcadet.com yeah. or markkumar.com. It's very That's simple. Right. You just go there or simplepodcastcloud.com. You just go yeah. there. So URL is definitely, definitely, I 100% agree. It's definitely important to have. And this, that's the call to action you want to derive yeah. your particular listener to. Yep. Well, especially nowadays with everything going on with Anchor, Spotify, all these different platforms. Um I did an episode recently, a big, big issue has been the RIA compliance uh, with ASCAP and BMI. And what a lot of people don't realize is that they, they've been able to skirt the radar, Mark. They, they've been able to fly under the radar for a long, long time. And that's why they think they're going to be able to keep flying. But the right. problem is, as a former broadcast person, the one thing I've been saying that has started to happen now is broadcast has been riding our coattails. And they finally realized it. They finally realized that we as podcasters have stolen their listeners. Yep. 
And that's because when they're out of their car and in the gym, nobody's using a radio anymore. They're going to listen to their podcast while they're working out or while they're jogging. When they walk into their office, they can't log in to the radio station on the URL, but they can log into their podcast on their phone. Absolutely. We so, as a podcasters are going to do... I'm sorry, not to cut you off. I'll, okay. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Yeah, well, no. The, the important thing to remember is that because now every single radio show and TV show that you watch, like morning shows, like, hey, after the show, tune into the podcast. Hey, when we're off the air, make sure to tune into the podcast. So that radio station that pays ASCAP and BMI now has a podcast. Now ASCAP and BMI are like, we need to turn our algorithms to anchor. Yep. We need to turn our algorithms to Spotify and Apple where they were not there before. Yep. And now it's going to be a totally different game and get ready for that hammer to start coming down out there, folks. Because even myself, like I use my own music and I am a registered ASCAP BMI musician. Okay. I get warnings about my own music. Really? Not even joking. I get warnings that like somebody's used your music. Yeah, I know. That's my podcast. <laughs> I own the podcast. Nice to meet you again. Uh, and every few months I have to tell ASCAP and BMI, hey, yeah, that's me. Here's my ASCAP BMI number. Here's the song that you're talking about. My name's Chris Jordan. I also perform as No Disassemble. That's my music. <laughs> Don't find them. <laughs> The final just be split between the two of us anyway. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. What I was going to say was like that we as a podcaster are going to do what Netflix did to Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Literally, oh, yeah. you know how when Blockbuster back yep. in the day, way, way back in the day, they were popular and Netflix came out. You can listen to or watch, actually watch your videos right at home. First, it started with the yep. DVD, mm -hmm. then on the own streaming. Yeah. And now it's like, blockbuster is gone like this is yeah. what's going to happen to radio sooner or later podcasters are going to kill it and radio is going to be absolutely pretty soon not soon well, enough but pretty soon i i, I wouldn't say necessarily and mainly due to the fact of frequencies in the fcc and and just the upkeep of that but the one thing that i would say that we would probably see before the end of radio is right. you and i have a, have an fcc license to operate a website Yep. Because don't forget, the internet is now under the auspice of the SCC. So now that we are officially broadcasting something, <laughs> exactly, be ready. It could very well happen in the next few years. And whenever I signed up as a uh, ASCAP BMI publishing house, mm -hmm. my music distributor was like, you only needed to sign up as an artist. Why'd right. you do that? I was like, I own a podcast network. It's probably in my best interest to go ahead and register as a publishing house because it's not going to be too long before we start getting royalties for people using our clips. Right. Absolutely. You know, that it's just coming as a matter of time. Yeah. You know? So yeah, so, it literally so, is. It's yeah. it's regular conversation. If you if you follow the threads in radio broadcasting, if you follow the threads on uh like just your your average FCC billboard and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, man, man. What I want to ask you next is like, uh, so far, first of all, thank you so much for providing oh, this definitely. amazing content. It's been amazing talking to you. What I wanted to ask you was next is that if we were to have a podcast, somebody mm -hmm. who's just starting out, he has he or she has no experience whatsoever. They just got introduced to the whole wonderful world of podcasting because they heard Joe Rogan made ten million dollars sure, sure. or yeah. whatever. So, what advice would you give that particular individual? Just just give an individual a name so you could be like referring to it. So let's just give him a John, John okay. Smith, whatever, right? John Smith, starting out, he's twenty five. He wants to get into the podcasting world. What advice would you give him? so that he can have his podcast up and running as fast as way possible. Up and running meaning he can list it into the iTunes sure. and on all those podcasts directly so people can listen to it. Sure. Uh, really, my, my first piece of advice for anybody starting a show is decide right now whether or not you want to make money with it. Okay. 
decide from day one whether you want to monetize. You don't have to focus on monetization to start off with. But if you want to monetize, you need to start building your brand from day one. You need to, like I said, have that clear, concise three to five sentence. This is what we're about. We do not stray from it. Uh, otherwise, your, your audience doesn't know what you're about. Um, so it's really that branding. Make sure that you have a clear, concise direction that you're headed in and that you want to cover. It's some, some kind of message that you want to get across. Something like that. There's 101 people out there with shows that are 10 people sitting around talking. Those are cool too. You know, um, I, I got a couple of them on my network that do decent. Um, but for me, whenever I'm looking for shows, it's normally something like this where I want to hear about a specific topic. Um, one, of, one of my big things was, um, and that I try to remind people is that radio isn't dead. It's, it's just back to AM radio. <laughs> it's just back to talk radio. That's all. That's right. all that's taken over is people have realized that talk radio is what's more important yep. than hearing the same 10 songs for an hour. You know, um, like you could tune out, tune back in an hour later and hear probably a good three, four of the same songs you heard a couple hours ago. Um, so, yeah, it's I mean, people have definitely started to see that it's a rigged game out there and that podcasting is really the, the independent way to go. Um, so yeah, for me, it's, it's really about brand, figure out what you're going to be about, figure out what your show's about and stick to it. Awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that. And the next question is like, if someone were to create a podcast, what would be your advice to whether to do it a, what they call it, a weekly one or mm. season one, or what are the benefits one over the other? Hmm. Now, see, it's an interesting question because talking sound is seasonal. Dudes okay. and beer is episodic. Um, <laughs> dudes and beer, I have never missed a Tuesday. Okay. It started off on a Tuesday and it has been live on Tuesday since day one. Okay. Um, so that, that, that's just been what it is. Uh, talking sound I've done in seasons. Okay. And mainly because sometimes there's a lot going on in the industry in a season. Sometimes I'm so busy, like there are seasons with eight episodes. Like I wasn't even able to put one out a month. And it's sad because like that's one of my favorite shows. It is literally about what I love uh, right. and what I live day to day is tech and AV. Uh, right. So I've been, I've been trying over the last year, year and a half to really devote a lot more to that. Make sure that I do it at least once a month. Um, it really depends on the show. Like Dudes and Beer, I could not see doing once a month. I literally couldn't. Um, but that's it's too, it's too much fun not to do it every week. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, number one, it, whenever I first started it, it was very much the fact that I started Dudes and Beer so that I would get out of the house once a week. <laughs> the, only, the only thing I left the house for was a gig. That was it. And okay. maybe I would hang out and have a beer after. Okay. But typically it was like, I'm done with my gig. I'm going home. So like at 40 years old, it was like, dude, I need to have a life again. I don't have a life. <laughs> so the idea was, you know, everybody bring a six pack and a couple of topics. We'll sit around and we'll all have each other's beer and right. we'll enjoy some conversation for the night and record it. Right. Um, and that's why the, the tagline is, Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. Uh, Interesting tagline. <laughs> so, yeah, and it, it really is. Uh, for me, I couldn't imagine doing Dudes and Beer less because the news cycle and the way that things happen oh. happen so rapidly. Yep. Um, and it, for me, it's much, much better to be doing it once a week. Uh, whatever your production schedule is, figure out what you can do. Mm -hmm. what your load can bear. And when I say your load, I mean you, host, you, 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 you. Don't depend on anybody else to be editing your show. Yep. Even if you have three other dudes in the studio with you, be ready to be the only dude editing and putting up your show. Just saying it. Yep. Just saying it. <laughs> I'm being real. And that comes from a, from a history of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I started my career off as an AV technician in rock and roll, and I follow a lot of the same principles that are like the formula of success for local rock and roll, where if you spend three hours for every one hour in the studio promoting right. that one to three ratio, we practiced for one hour this week. Now let's all go out and promote the band for three hours, whether it's on social media, whatever. If you all do that, you will be successful. It Absolutely. will happen. <laughs> it may take a little time, but it right. will happen, you know? And like, it took, it took five years almost for the dudes and beer group to grow to the point that it has where it's self-sustaining. People post their own articles. People start their own conversations. It's been great. Um, but one of the, one of the first articles I read whenever I started getting into podcasting six, seven years ago, um, was get ready to be alone. Get ready to be alone. Get ready to talk to yourself and be okay with talking to yourself. Yep. Be ready to know that the content that you're putting out is good. Just remember that you are one fish in a sea of hundreds of thousands of fishes. Not just that, as of January this last year, there were over a million podcasts and growing. Yep. So like we were saying with the URL, the URL is like a GPS that you put on your fish. And if you want to show the world where your fish is, you better have a GPS tag on it whenever you put it out into the ocean, folks, because otherwise it's going to be like, hey, I heard you grew a fish. Where is it at? Uh, it's out <laughs> there somewhere. Some, some. Somewhere. I bet you could find it if you looked, <laughs> you know? And then you can start up a URL three years later and good luck ever getting your URL to top up in searches over iTunes yep. or Anchor or yep. whatever. Like they will have all your high dollar traffic. You'll never be able to overtake them. Yep. So <laughs> that, that definitely solid advice. And you know, like which is what you say, build your brand, have a URL, yeah. because if you start that from day one, your show may not take and, off right away, but as it takes right. off, people are going to be like, wow, you're good. Well, you know? and like I said, I lean on my experience from rock and roll, and it was very much the same thing with musicians where it was like, hey, guys, we can get together and drink all night and rehearse. That's cool. But we'd probably be a lot more functional if we all just rehearsed and then drank. <laughs> Because I would come in, they would ask me to come in and be their full-time sound engineer. And I'd be right. like, okay, but I'm going to be wearing a producer hat. And when you suck, I'm going to tell I'm you you suck. you suck. And I'm going to have video of it. Right. And you're going to get to watch how sucky you were. Right. Because you decided to drink. So we can either decide to be the drunk band that comes in and drinks up our bar tab all night. Or we can decide to be the professional band that comes in, demands to get paid. And maybe has a couple of beers. <laughs> Definitely a productive way to do it, you know. So, Definitely. But you have to decide that from the beginning. If you go in as the band that just drinks up their earnings every night, that's all that the bar is ever going to see you as. Right. And they're never. whenever you finally decide to be serious about it, they'll never take you seriously because right. you never took yourself seriously from the beginning. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely, man. And this part of the show, what I want to do is I want to give you the floor Ooh. to share anything you want, any place where people can get in touch with you or anything at all. The floor is all yours. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, you can always reach me at the HC Universal Network. That is my podcast network. You can stop by there. Tons of great content, probably about 13 shows, Dudes and Beer, Yes, But Why podcast, uh, Scary Dad. Good Lord, we got a fantasy football podcast on there. Uh, gentlemen, no class. If you're into the guys sitting around a table and talking bit, okay. um, all kinds of stuff. So even growing there, uh, podcastcadet.com is of course my big thing that, uh, we've been doing a lot of lately since COVID really hit. Uh, there's been a lot of people wanting to start up shows and really taking that initiative. Um, the big thing is like uh, turning your business into a show, starting a show around your business. Right. Um, and really using that as a means by which to get word about your business out, things like that. So we've seen a lot of people coming in, starting podcasts dedicated around their business, uh, really trying to focus their advertising toward that. So 
Um, and we've seen quite a few people coming to us trying to rebrand old shows um, where they've just had time now to sit back and work on it the way that they haven't before, you know, um, because now they have all this unabridged time. So they're literally like, wow, uh, how does how does this work? Like, oh, my God, I have time to figure this out now, you know? So, yeah. Um, and then, of course, Dudes and Beer every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central. Uh, talking Sound, whenever I get good interviews for Talking Sound. Uh, we've got a great one coming up this week, actually, with some people about the uh, podcast ignition system, which is great. I'll have to talk to you about that off air, my friend. But you need to have her on because... There is some uh, there is some really good stuff being done up around there. All so, right. awesome man! Thank you so much for once again, Chris, for being here. It's truly Absolutely. been a pleasure. And now it's part of the show where we are going to share the thing that we talked about earlier. Uh, that is the giveaway that we're giving away until Ooh. end of September. Uh, one year of complimentary uh, subscription to our platform, which is simplepodcastcloud.com. And in order for you to enter it, basically what you're going to do is just leave us a positive review in iTunes and take a screenshot of it and email it to us at sport at simplepodcast.com and then you will be the one to enter into win that particular membership we're going to pick five a lucky winner on september 30th and if you are the lucky one we'll give you an email so make sure you leave us a good review and send us a screenshot of it and we'll talk to you soon all right